I, our people, we've been talking in, for, for time in memorial and the way we've communicated with our elders and our young people and our communities is through stories. Stories are so important. And I want to share with you a, a quick story that incorporates uh, a policy. And I want to thank Bridget as well for the opportunity to come and and uh, share today in this, uh, you know, in this celebration of 20 years of the APO. I feel honoured and sometimes I question myself and say, why me? And one of my elders said to me, why not you? So uh, there, was this, there was this young Aboriginal boy. He grew up on a reservation. He had five sisters and two brothers. His mother was a single parent. He didn't know who his father was, never met his father until he was 20. He went on the reservation, they had a little school. He went to that little school, it was just all Aboriginal kids, all Ab his cousins, the families that lived on that reservation. He swam in the river. He was taught to respect the land and the country, uh, the, the, the mountain ranges, uh, the beautiful smell of the pines, the, 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 the sound of all the wildlife that's coming from the, from the river that echoes along the river when he was sitting on the bank as a young boy with his family and friends. And so he went to the school and he started to, uh, you know, listen to this non-Aboriginal teacher who, was, who had a big influence on this young Aboriginal boy's life. And so he went to uh, sixth class at this school he had dreams, aspirations and goals. Even though he looked across the road where his uncle was there with his, with the, his, uh, his wife and his cousins and, and he had that, that, that father role model. And this young Aboriginal boy started to question himself and thinking, well, where's, where's his father? If his uncle's there for them kids, how come... His father's not there to take him to his first day of school, not to be there when he, when he started to go to high school. So early on, early on, this young Aboriginal boy started question, questioning his, where, his existence. Why is he here? So he goes into high school and he tends, uh, he, he goes into a, an environment where there's, there's 400 non-Aboriginal people and it was a real cultural shock for this, for this young Aboriginal boy who lived on a reservation. And we want to talk about policies and the impact of policies. Let's not forget the legacy that some of these failed policies have left our people, like the segregation policy, like the assimilation policy, the child removal policy, where that you can have your kids taken away because of the policy. Policies, Peter, is really, really important especially when it impacts on future generations. So this young Aboriginal boy bucked against the system because, like Peter mentioned earlier, they started talking about 1788, whereas his uncles were talking about time in memorial. And so he started to learn about Captain Cook. And he's saying to himself, hang on, there's something wrong here. So this young Aboriginal boy bucked against the system because he questioned the system and said, well, hang on, you're telling me about this, but I'm going home and learning about, you know, uh, our, our, my, this culture that's been alive for, you know, since seven, before 1788 that isn't talked about it in this education system. So in year nine he, uh, he played up this young Aboriginal boy and he was told to leave school third form, you wouldn't amount to anything that they told him that he was just like the rest of them. And that young Aboriginal boy believed that. So he got himself into trouble. He mixed with the wrong crowds. Because another thing that, uh, that needs to be discussed in these policy debates is racism and institutional racism. Hence why we're trying to have a, our own voice enshrined in the Constitution, because our founding doc a document doesn't talk about us as, as First Nation people, only when they want to use powers, certain powers, to disempower First Nations people. 
So this young Aboriginal boy gets himself into all sorts of trouble, uh, uh, gets in trouble with the law, uh, finds himself on the wrong side of the law, experiments with drugs, alcohol, and two months after he turned 18, he wake up in prison. And he's looking at a long custodial sentence. And he was given a second chance. Then a guide comes into his life, which would be his uncle. And his uncle said to him, I know you're, this young Aboriginal boy was a very angry man. And his uncle said, you got, that anger has to be turned into advocacy. The only way that change can be made is if you go out and get yourself educated, he said to this young Aboriginal boy, and you use that. He said, non-Aboriginal people, they'll respect that paper and they mightn't respect you. So he, uh, he did that through Western Sydney, went to Western Sydney, got educated as a mature age student, and then doors started to open for him. And then he, he, uh, he applied for the... Uh, uh, there was a vacancy in the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council. Uh, he put his hand up because he wanted to represent his people. He got elected by his peers. And then he went on to uh, be the chair of the New South Wales Aboriginal Land Council. He spoke four times at New York, at the United Nations in New York, on behalf of all Aboriginal people in this country, and spoke twice in, in uh, Geneva at the United Nations. He went on to advise two prime ministers in this country. Not one of them listened, but he advised them. And that young Aboriginal boy is, a, is sitting here today. And that is my story. Because that story is so, so important. Because my, my mother was put on a reservation because of the policy a policy that discriminated against my people. And you're right, Peter, that's why I'm, I don't consider myself to be educated. And my uncle said, you don't have to be educated, son. Just be pissed off enough to change the system. And so I did. I turned that anger into advocacy. And that's what I tell my kids. You know, please, you know, be advocates, be positive advocates. <laughs>